Good evening, everyone. I am Andrew, kk 4 shl and I uh, am very interested in digital mobile radio, or DMR. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, before we get started, uh, let's get a show of hands. Before tonight, how many have heard about or know a little bit more than something about DMR? Okay. All right, good deal. So, little introduction on. Let me make sure I get this thing working. Whoops. <laughs> A little bit of background on me. Got into amateur radio in June of 2013 for the opportunity to talk on uh, digital radio, including DMR and fusion. That was one of the primary attractions for me. Very much enjoy uh, digital radio communications uh, and digital audio, including DMR, P25, which is Project 25, Phase 1 and 2, and Yuzu System Fusion. I currently own three DMR radios, including a Motorola XPR 4550 and 7550. Um, the Anytone D868, which is right here up front, and you never know, more in the future. That's what we always say in the amateur radio community. I am usually monitoring what is known as Talk Group Virginia Statewide 3151. We'll go over that more in just a little bit. Before we begin, remember, amateur radio is always experimental. We're always trying to experiment. Oops, that didn't work, or yeah, we got that to work. Amateur radio should always be learning and should always be fun no matter what you're doing. And amateur radio is pushing the boundaries in technology, whether it be DMR, uh, Yezu System Fusion, P25, uh, what we can do with radios, etc. And amateur radio is fun, always. DMR is not the replacement of analog, D-Star, uh, Echo Link, Fusion, HF Radio, Moon Bounce, Scatter, Contesting Electronics, or even the Universe. So, what is digital mobile radio? First of all, it's known as DMR. It is a standard for digital voice communications. It is published by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, ETSI, in 2005 uh, for Tier 1 and Tier 2 in 2015. The goal of the standards is to create digital systems, or low cost, it should always be low cost if we can, uh, low complexity, and interoperable between vendors. Um, I shouldn't have to uh, have one vendor that I can't talk to another vendor. In other words, my Indytone radio can talk to my Connect Systems radio, no problem. So the DMR Association, these are a few of the uh, uh, groups that are a member of the DMR Association. Global organization focused on growing the DMR market. It provides interoperability testing, certification, DMR education, promotion, and encourages discussion. These are a few of the um, association members. Um, Vertex, your Anytone, uh, Motorola, Hytera, even Kenwood. I know some of you have Kenwood radios, Tate, even ICOM is a uh, DMR association member, all trying to improve digital communications all the time. So what is the DMR standard? It specifies the air interface between radios. It is a two-time slot, uh, multiple domain access, TDMA. It is a 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth. Instead of your typical 25 kilohertz bandwidth that you're used to talking on, it condenses it down to 12.5. It is digital modulation for FSK. Uh, it's usually frequencies between 30 megahertz and 1 gigahertz. 
and DMR association members have agreed to use uh, this AMBE vocoder right here. What are some of the benefits of using DMR? It allows two simultaneous voice conversations using one single repeater. It improves audio performance over analog. We'll go over that more in just a little bit. There's more efficient use of radio spectrum versus the analog. There's longer battery life versus analog because everything has been condensed <coughs> down. Instead of using the full 25 kilohertz signal, you're only using half of that. <coughs> Lowest total cost of ownership for clubs compared to other ham digital modes. It's even um, less expensive than the Asu system fusion uh, that we have right now. There are uh, 12 plus radio manufacturers you saw before. Uh, lower radio prices, uh, it's capable of being linked to over 1,800 repeaters worldwide. You'll see in just a little bit, we have all kinds of networks out there that you can talk on or talk to people from all over the world. I've made conversations with <coughs> Germany, Africa, the Bahamas, you name it, I can probably get into it. And I'll uh, explain some of the ways I can get in a little bit later. So, here are some of the features of ham radio DMR network. There's multiple talk groups, uh, which allows uh, users to access groups of uh, other users by geography or simply keying up a talk group, as they're known in DMR. There's dual time slots. You, you can allow two simultaneous conversations on one single repeater. You can have one person talking on one uh, talk group on one time <coughs> slot at the same time as somebody else is having an entirely different conversation on a different time slot and you will never hear each other. You'll never even know it. Uh, you can do text messaging through uh, DMR with some networks. The local network we have, DMR VA, um, does not allow that right now. Uh, there is another network called Brandmeister that does allow that. There's also roaming. What you can do is set your radio to, as soon as it loses signal from one repeater, to automatically go to the next repeater as you're traveling, just like that, and key up, no problem. Like so. Like so. Right, exactly. Um, you can do remotely IP programmable repeaters. Uh, somebody can be remote programming their uh, repeater uh, strictly by IP addresses, pretty cool. There's also APRS uh, that you can do through DMR. Some people do that uh, as well. So, to explain what I was talking about before, the DMR repeater, you have slot one, slot two, slot one, and slot two. 30 uh, milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, compared to an analog repeater like 146.925 or um, 145.470, one of those, uh, is one voice channel. It's not split up um, with the voice channels, or slots, I should say. So here's a graph uh, illustrating what the improved uh, voice performance is of DMR as opposed to uh, analog. Uh, obviously showing that as far as you go away uh, from the repeater, you'll still have it. Uh, however, there will be a digital cliff that as soon as you go away from it, um, it drops out just like that. But the audio quality is substantially better with DMR or something like that than Analog. There is no hiss, there is no static, there is no none of that. No, like I was saying, no hissing, no popping, no static. Uh, you do have better RF range than older digital technologies. You have forward error correction and uh, cyclic redundancy. Another uh, graph. Uh, showing the improved voice performance of DMR over uh, analog. So, 
here's a better illustration of how uh, the spectrum works. With analog, obviously you have your 25 kilohertz signal. With DMR or P25, you would have 12.5 kilohertz signal. So you would have compressed, uh, and you can basically use one time slot or the other time slot. Like I was showing down here, one FM repeater, uh, one conversation, two DMR repeaters, you can have four conversations because you're doing that two time slots. Another illustration of two repeaters in one. Uh, repeater one uh, and repeater two, you would have to have two different conversations uh, with the DMR. You could have four conversations going on at the same time with just one frequency. So with DMR, you do have longer battery life because, once again, instead of using the full bandwidth, you are compressing it down 12.5 kilohertz, and you're not putting out as much power all the time. And you're transmitting half the time due to time division multiple access. Instead of taking the entire time to transmit on analog, you're taking half that time and transmitting on digital, which is far more efficient on the spectrum. So a little bit of network definitions for you. Before I mentioned that there are talk groups in DMR, uh, with Fusion, some of you may know, there are what they call rooms. Uh, you can do wires X rooms, the like. With DMR, there's what we call talk groups. There's, like I mentioned before, there's Virginia statewide, 3151, there's local, uh, <laughs> 27500, and I'll pass around these sheets uh, that I have up here illustrating uh, what repeaters we have, what uh, talk groups we have, what's available when. So with the talk groups, you have a virtual radio channel that's uh, typically assigned by geography or language. Obviously, you have your time slot, uh, the brief interval in which a DMR radio uh, accepts uh, data from another radio. Uh, the color code, this is pretty important with DMR. With a, color, with a repeater for DMR, unlike the analog repeater that you have, where the tone, for instance, for Charlottesville is 151.4, for DMR, you would need to know the color code. That's the same thing as having a tone on the repeater. So if, say, for instance, a local repeater we have is located up at Bitterden Mountain. It's 444.9125. Uh, and instead of having to know the tone, you would have to know what color code it is. Like for instance, for the Charlottesville DMR repeater, it's color code one. So that's very important to know if you down the road want to program uh, a DMR radio, that kind of thing. So going down, you have what's called the C-Bridge. Uh, the C-Bridge basically is a server that bring, bridges together DMR networks. What happens is when you key up your radio to go to talk to the local Charlottesville repeater, that repeater is connected by IP, internet protocol, back to the Seabred server that then connects to all the other DMR repeaters to, to spread the signal out and to be able to talk to others. Uh, with a user ID, what that is, is every radio, well, correction, every person that is transmitting on DMR, obviously in addition to having a call sign that's for amateur radio, you have to have what's known as a user ID, which is a seven digit number, freely available through radioid.net. Um, and I can show you how to get that. What that is, is you put that number in and it tells the DMR repeater, okay, you're good to transmit, you're good to talk. So when you key up the radio with the correct call sign, the correct color code, the correct time slot, et cetera, it basically gives you the go ahead to talk. CPS is your uh, 
and then you have your vocoder uh, converts the analog voice to digital data. All right, digital voice systems. Uh, these are some examples of digital voice systems, as I mentioned before. Uh, what operating bands they generally are, uh, you can see for your uh, P25 phase two, like the local public safety is getting ready to go to, uh, what operating bands they use for DMR, you can see 70 centimeters, two meters, 33 centimeters, the like, D-Star, Fusion, what have you, uh, and what you can do with it. Uh, examples of longer battery life, um, whether they have dual time slots, uh, you'll notice that P25 and DMR have dual time slots, whereas D-Star and Fusion uh, do not. And then obviously the range. Another uh, chart showing uh, various protocols that are used in digital voice systems, uh, all the error correction you can do, uh, or that there is, I should say, uh, your spatial efficiency, uh, adopted worldwide standard, what have you. So this is going to explain some of the DMR standards. Tier one, your frequency division multiple access. <coughs> Tier two is what locally we use um, for your two slot uh, time division multiple access, and then your IP site connect uh, for, for each system. That's primarily Motorola and Hytera, those, those two vendors. Uh, things are right now looking to go uh, more toward a tier three uh, at some point, uh, but that, that'll be further down the road. So currently for amateur radio DMR networks, there's over 2,100 repeaters <coughs> worldwide and always going up all the time. There's over 34,000 registered radios worldwide uh, there is 37,258 U.S. registered radios, uh, and that number is going up by the minute, it seems. Uh, there's also uh, networks that are divided by infrastructure, uh, your C-Bridge, your Smart PTT, uh, those are examples by Motorola Solutions. Um, those are primarily in the U.S. and the U.K. That's your Brandmeister, uh, that's primarily all over the U.S., some uh, in the U.K., uh, et cetera. Hytera, uh, right here, is a brand uh, primarily over in the U.K., that kind of thing. Um, and a lot of the hot spots that you may have heard about or have seen, including this one right here, operate on what is known as the Brandmeister network. Uh, some of you may have uh, homebrew uh, hotspots or even uh, DB megas, they all operate on the Brandmeister network. So it's a worldwide growth, it's the newest system, it's growing all the time. You can simply take a couple of Motorola uh, repeaters and put them together with a Raspberry Pi and be on the air with a DMR repeater, it's pretty cool. There's DMR Plus, that's a new one that's, that's coming up. Uh, it's original on the uh, Hytera network. Its uh, growth is slowing and, the, and it's not being used much, but it is there. So this is a chart showing you what some of the amateur radio DMR networks are in Virginia. The one uh, here locally for Charlottesville is DMRVA. We have 10 plus repeaters right now. There's uh, what's known as DMR Mark, which is primarily a Motorola um, uh, network. Uh, I don't think the DMR Mark number of repeaters is actually correct. I believe there's at least one or two. But Brandmeister, there's five plus. I believe there's at least two or three in Lynchburg alone. Uh, some of you may remember Ben Mills in 4CV. Um, he is one of the system admin for the AWS Virginia, uh, NOVA, 
network. And they have uh, four repeaters, and I believe a fifth one getting ready to go online here shortly. Down here you'll see NCPRN, what that stands for is North Carolina Private Radio Network. It's a collaboration among amateur operators all over the state of North Carolina that came up with the idea to do a statewide network of DMR repeaters. Um, it's pretty cool. And there's also the K4USD network that has three repeaters. Um, as far as repeaters, there's 81 registered uh, repeaters in the state of Virginia. There's five in the Richmond area, seven in northern Virginia, two, one in Charlottesville, and one in Harrisonburg right now. As far as users that are using it right now, there's 1,086 registered users uh, or IDs in Virginia. 20 of them are in Charlottesville. Six are in Rutgersville. Our very own um, K4D&D has one, as well as N0WP, uh, W4PRT, myself, and others. And obviously, uh, users a lot in Richmond as well. This is a map showing you coverage, what coverage is like for DMR repeaters in the state of Virginia. As you can tell, for the most part, it's covered. Uh, there are, of course, <coughs> spots that it is not covered. Um, Northern Virginia, uh, some in south, uh, down toward North Carolina, but by and large, it's covered. And of course, Charlottesville being right there in the center. Some of the local repeaters that we do have, we have uh, DMRVA is up on Afton Mountain, 444-9125 with a color code of 1. Got one in Harrisonburg, we have uh, one in Fredericksburg, Linden near Berryville, uh, Richmond, Petersburg, uh, Lynchburg up on Apple Orchard, there's Richmond, uh, Herndon, uh, Roanoke, that kind of thing. All right, let's talk about the low cost of ownership to get into DMR. Example, uh, if you have a radio club of 20 members, one digital repeater costs 500, uh, correction, $620 for Fusion. For D starts, 1,548. For DMR, it's about 1,800. Okay, so that's a little more expensive than Fusion. Um, then it's showing you programming, cable, and software um, for all that. Digital portables, if you want to do 20 of them, just kind of showing you the costs associated with each. These are a couple of examples of repeaters that they have uh, for DMR. Uh, the XPR 8400, the SLR 5700, both Motorola repeaters. These are some of the portable radios, uh, like I mentioned before. I did bring a few with me tonight. Uh, what I'll do is pass them around. Let's you guys have a look at them. This one right here, full color screen, is the Anytone 868. Let you uh, look at that and everything. This one right here is the Connect System CS750. Uh, the differences you'll see are on the color uh, screen versus mono, uh, chrome screen. There's also the knob on the top that's primarily for your talk groups or for your volume. Uh, then you can program it, uh, the rest, as you wish. This is just another uh, example of the Alex HD1. It's kind of Motorola-like, that kind of thing. So these are some of the mobile radios. As you can see, the Connect Systems uh, CS800. I happen to own one right here. Um, so that's what that looks like. If any of you would like to come up and have a look at that at some point, you're more than welcome to, to do so. The network, how it all works. All right, so I mentioned IP Site Connect. So you have your repeaters all through here. They all go to a master. Then that master goes back to the C bridge, the hardware server. And then that server goes out to 
the whole wide world and connects with all of the rest of the repeaters. Another example of brand mustard and how that works. Uh, same sort of uh, deal, uh, just a little bit different setup. These are some other ways. If you, if you don't happen to have a local repeater nearby, you can do uh, what's called getting a uh, hotspot. Uh, there's DV Mega hotspots. Uh, there's your Raspberry Pi, uh, MMDVM board. There's the Shark RF open spot, uh, that kind of thing. I have one up here that I'm showcasing. The um, this is known as the Zoom spot. I got this from Gigaparts. I think it was about $200 or thereabouts. And you can do DMR Fusion, P25, the like. So, say you want to get into DMR. What do you have to do? Well, first of all, you need to get a DMR ID. That consists of a seven-digit unique identifier uh, unique to each user. Uh, you can go online to radioid.net uh, to register, then check that you are within range of a DMR repeater. If you're not, uh, you can get a hotspot and um, program that up. Uh, and make sure it's connected to your home Wi-Fi and make sure you have the right frequency uh, programmed into the radio, whatever your portable is. Uh, with a code plug, that's the next thing. Code plugs are available on websites and group pages if you've never built a code plug. Uh, some people find it challenging to try to figure out what, what all this is and how to do it. There, there is help out there. Uh, then what you would do is go to your local zone. Each code plug has what they call a zone for a specific area. I always suggest doing a zone for your hotspot, a zone for like the Charlottesville repeater, a zone for Richmond, etc. And then make sure you obviously you listen for any traffic on a talk group. If there is none, uh, key up. Uh, keeping in mind common courtesies. Speaking of which, some of the common courtesies in DMR. What to do when keying up a talk group? Give you a call and talk group you're on, say KK4SHO, monitoring Virginia statewide. Just like that. Or KK4SHO is on Charlottesville Local, monitoring. Or you can do KK4SHO is on Virginia Statewide looking for a QSO. Just want to test, which I always recommend doing. What you can do is go to the local echo test group. Echo test is essentially kind of like a parrot function where you speak into the microphone on the talk group and the repeater has this talk group and it basically plays back what you just said to it. What that does is two things. One, tells you that yes, you are getting out, and two, gives you an idea of what your audio is like into the repeater. So obviously you want to pause between transmissions just like anything else to allow others to join in. And last but not least, do whatever you feel comfortable. So this is um, just an idea of some of the time slots and talk groups. I also have here that I'll pass around. Uh, the this first sheet that I'll pass around is a sheet showing you what some of the repeaters are in this area. Uh, on the top, you'll see it says time slot one and all the talk groups that are available. You'll see it says on, on is full time use, and then you'll see like 15 minutes is basically it's on a 15 minute timer. This uh, second sheet that I'll pass around is a talk group matrix of all the repeaters that are uh, up in Northern Virginia, uh, if any of you want to travel to Northern Virginia or what have you. So I'll go ahead and pass this around. You can have a look at it and uh, ask any questions as you may. Uh, let me go back real quick. The Charlottesville Local, what that is, is it's a local talk group that is unique just to that local repeater. Like if you wanted to get on the Shaw's for Local talk group, 
just to talk to people in the Charlottesville area, you could do so. If you wanted to talk to somebody anywhere in the state of Virginia, you can get on talk group 3151, which happens to be on this time slot too, and talk to anyone within range of a DMR repeater that is in the state of Virginia. Say, for instance, you have, you're in conversation with somebody who's on Virginia statewide, and you want to carry on your QSO <laughs> with them, but you realize that they're on a different repeater than you're on, what you can do with DMR is go to this PRN chat one, which is, what that is is a talk group between repeaters that you can talk to between the two repeaters off of the Virginia statewide talk group. All right, co-plugs. What the heck am I talking about when I say co-plugs? A co-plug is a software set of instructions that tells the DMR radio what frequencies to receive and transmit on. Uh, what the color codes for the repeater are, uh, what time slot to be on, what talk group uh, to be on, that's very important. Uh, each uh, co-plug usually has several zones, like I was mentioning before, each uh, zone should be like a hot uh, spot or a repeater or what have you. Then you have uh, your zone within a uh, code plug typically has about 16 channels or talk groups as you are seeing on that um, sheet that's being circulated around right now. For most beginners, designing and building a code plug is the most challenging part. Do not despair, there's help. There's always somebody who's willing to help you understand what the heck this code plug thing is and how to program it into your radio. Rules of thumb, uh, echo test. Like I mentioned before, echo test is the talk group uh, provided to the user so that the user can test their, uh, it's a good idea to always key up there first to hear what you sound like before you go on to other talk groups. As I mentioned before, the Virginia statewide is linked to hundreds of repeaters and hotspots all over the country, uh, including Virginia. Uh, local. As I mentioned before, uh, each repeater site that is uh, specific to that site. Um, if you wanted to set up a DMR repeater, you could obtain a Motorola Moto Turbo DMR repeater, obtain the uh, coordinated repeater frequency, secure a location with internet access, 500 kilobytes per second minimum. Then register for your repeater ID. There's a website you can go to to do that as well. And apply to join a DMR network. I would highly recommend DMR VA. Other ways to access uh, DMR. Say you don't necessarily want to jump into this with both feet. Say you just want to listen. There is a website you can do that. It's called hose.brandmeister.network. You can uh, go to this website, put in 3151 just for uh, Virginia statewide, and you should be able to, to listen to it, see who's uh, keying up, that kind of thing. All right, uh, these are some of the network uh, websites that you can go to to find out more information. DMRVA.org, ncprn.net, dmrmark.net, uh, brandmeister.network, et cetera. I'm sure there will be questions. What questions do you have for me? Here. I assume your slides are going to be available on the website. Yes. So we don't have to write all this down. Sure, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So I've got one of these DMR radios, and I drive down to my daughter's house in Augusta, Georgia. Uh-huh. Do I need to have, look up on the internet to see what's available down there? Or can I, I just turn on the radio and say, talk and see what's available? I would encourage you to, yes, look up on the internet and see what's available. Do I have a computer with me then? Okay. Uh, do I have other, a program with the computer or can I program it by hand? Uh, with some radios, you can program it by hand. Uh, this Alance HD1 is one of them. The Anytone is another one that you can do that by hand. Uh, put in the frequency, if you know what the color code is, 
uh, even use Saber Peterbrook uh, is a really good example. It'll find your location and then you just go to DMR mode and it will tell you the closest for Peter you have nearby. It gives you that color code that I was talking about before, the frequency, and whatever time slot you want. I would encourage, say, local or something. And then you just program it into your radio from the keypad, and it should be up and running in a matter of five minutes, I would say. Yeah, pretty much need to do my homework before I go somewhere. A little bit of homework, yes. <laughs> Unlike my analog radio that I can turn on and put the scan right. near somebody. <laughs> Oh, right. there we go. We right. Saw. Right. Yeah, but you still may have to program the tone. Well, yeah, the tones are easy. A lot of repeaters transmit the tone. Yeah. Sure. I'm going right. to tell you, the tone is, the tone is 1.4. Sure. Uh -huh. I think we had a hand up over here. Who, who pays for and maintains the repeaters? Uh, the repeater up at Baird End right now is uh, owned and maintained by James Kirkham, K4JK, and uh, QD4BPZ, uh, J Love Lady, up there. Uh, they maintain it all the time. I think we had a. Dennis. Radios, do they do simplex? Yes, the, there are. I didn't, I didn't mention it in, this, in these slides, but yes, there are simplex frequencies. Uh, mainly 441.000 is one of them. Uh, and 441075 is, is the other uh, simplex frequency that's kind of a national simplex frequency. When you uh, said color codes, and then I expected you to give a color, but you gave a number. <laughs> <laughs> is that just part of the secret here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The color code, as I was mentioning before, is, is the same thing as having the tone. As, as How many color codes are there? There are 16. 16. Yes. Zero through six. They have well, to yeah. Do with color, though. Right. Yeah, they have nothing at all to do with <laughs> red, yellow, orange, blue, whatever. It's yeah. just. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, was yep. I, I noticed the icon was on there, but can I use my icon radio with DMR? Like, I have a D Star. Right. Right. Well, ICOM is primarily affiliated with D Star. It happens to be a member of the DMR Association. Um, I have yet in my research to find a DMR radio that uh, ICOM has made. Uh, Kenwood has made some, but I have not seen ICOM make one yet. George. Is this, is this the same system that like green and orange county and all those are using? Yes. When they go to DMR? Yes. It, it's, well, it's the same idea, not the same system. Um, you, you can monitor it on your yeah. DMR hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. I went to Madison, and we all went from analog to DMR. That's Dave. No, he's still going. Um, when you go to I wanted to dovetail off what the other gentleman was saying there. Is that it, I, I, had a, I have a DMR radio, and after six months, one of the members here got it to work for me. Okay. <laughs> and it's, it, it's, very, it's very different, like you said, from a regular analog radio. You turn on an analog radio, you should at least be able to get squelch. You get nothing on right. this radio until it's been programmed. It, it, it can do analog, it can do DMR, but until you get the programming right, you get absolutely nothing other than a couple of beats if you key the, key the mic. And uh, we, we found out that mine, apparently mine had a bad programming cable. And okay. it took them three different cables before they got to program my, my radio once. I'm scared to death to add anything to it yeah. for fear of losing the, losing the other. Sure. And that's, that's certainly one of the concerns, as I mentioned in the slides, that, that one of the hardest parts of DMR is the code plug. But fortunately, people like myself and others that are more than happy to help you figure out where you went wrong, make sure that you have your essentials like your frequencies, your color codes, your time slots, make sure you have the talk groups. If you don't have those you know, four or five basic things, you're right, you're not going to be hearing much of anything. Dave. Just a point of information for everybody, you don't have to have a DMR radio if you have a hotspot. Right. And for, for 
somebody who wants to do it mobile, a hotspot connected to your cell phone to give you internet access and an hmm. analog radio, and you go anywhere. Yeah. Mm. Because the, the hotspot does the, does the DMR part for you. Right. Using the analog, phone, uh, analog radio connection to the hotspot. Right. I certainly can. David, I think you had a question. Yes, sir. If your DMR radio is equipped with a GPS in it, uh, is it, will it actively look for a DMR repeater? No. No. The only thing that that uh, GPS does in that DMR radio is puts out your latitude and longitude. And as an added caveat to that, it only works on Brandmeister networked repeaters. If you try to use it with a DMR VA repeater, for whatever reason, the owners, uh, James Kirkham and uh, Jay Lovelady, have both turned off uh, the GPS functionality with the Motorola or whatever repeaters they have up there. Brandmeister repeaters work that way. There, there's a website you can go to and track where you are. Uh, by GPS with some of the GPS-enabled uh, DMR radios, that kind of thing. One more question, Kevin. Sure. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, can DMR work, like if the internet goes down, can you talk locally? Through yes. The, the one repeater, it's just all out of, the repeaters won't link. It's, Correct. It's if I still wanted to talk DMR and I knew that we had a wide, area-wide outage, for instance, I could go to the Charlottesville repeater, Richmond repeater, what have you, and go to the local talk group and get on and not have a problem. You don't, it doesn't require internet, but it's highly helpful to have internet. So. All right. All right. Thank you, very Thank you all for your time. So most of these radios, you still have manual. Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. That saves me if I go somewhere and I don't know all the DMR crap. Absolutely. Thank you.